Welcome to Dear SQL DBA. I'm Kendra Little, and in Dear SQL DBA, I answer questions from database administrators or the people who work with them. Today's question isn't specific to SQL Server, which I often talk about. Today's question instead is about office relationships between DBAs. Here's our question. Dear SQL DBA, what do I do with a coworker who claims to have 20 years of experience being a DBA who puts all the production databases into simple recovery mode? Sincerely, next door to Derpton. So this is a tough question next door to Derpton. Living next door uh, to a cube <laughs> of another DBA who makes decisions that you feel risk the safety and availability of the data that you're taking care of is not an easy problem to have, right? So next door to Derpton has a coworker who uh, the question basically says, hey, we've got some databases where you know, losing data since the last full backup isn't a good idea, but my coworker doesn't seem to understand even how database settings impact uh, data recovery, how backups work, how transaction log backups work. And, and this implies that there's a lot of other things that could go wrong. So going deeper, it's, it's really tough being on a team where you feel like there isn't a level playing field and that other team members don't have the skills and the knowledge to do the job at the level you know that their job is they aren't someone who's supposed to be learning in a junior position they are your peer or possibly given their amount of experience possibly they have a senior level position pos and maybe you don't and they may make more money than you that's a really tough position to be in the biggest tool that you have when you're in this situation is change management. The, the problem that you can get into is that your data may be at risk. So you wanna make sure that you get your environment into the right position where you have it, the settings set up in the right way and all of the jobs and backup processes and maintenance set up in the best way too. And you've done things like document, okay, how much data can we lose? How long can the system be offline? And what you know service level agreements do we have for all of our databases? And now do we have all the jobs and configuration set up right for those? And you wanna make it so that you know there's a, a process by which if people are gonna change those settings, they go through a change management process that includes getting your change reviewed, which is typically done by the peers on your team, and then getting your change approved by a change management person. Now, if, if you don't have this already, which I'm guessing maybe you don't, because you're saying, hey, they just put stuff in the simple recovery mode, and it sounds like that's happening outside of input from other people. If you don't have this process already, then I think Derpton actually has bigger problems, because having change management isn't a drag. It's actually good for you, even if you're more thoughtful about your changes and you do have an understanding of how to avoid data loss, we all have times where something that sounds like a good idea and that perhaps is a really good idea, but the, the change to implement that doesn't go as planned <laughs> and it backfires on us. And in those situations, the change management process is actually hugely beneficial for you because you have a way to say, okay, well, here's the you know way we plan the change and the review we got and here's what we learned from the situation, the root cause of what happened. And when we do another change like this, here's what we'll do differently. So it kind of um, helps keep you safe as well. It's good process to have around. So my main recommendation when you are living next door to Derpton is to become a champion of saying, hey, I think we should follow a more reliable enterprise standards about planning our changes. Most IT shops do like change management and have a form of this and talk to your management and, and talk about it as a tool for your team that's good for you all and say, I think this would help me. 
you don't need to talk about your coworker in this process at all because this is really good for everyone and will be something that actually usually your management is going to look at and say, hey, that's actually a great idea. I really appreciate that you brought this to us. So change management is the first thing I would really think about becoming a champion of as sort of your biggest, your biggest life raft in this situation. The second thing to think about is, because I, I, have, I have been in your position, I would be really careful spinning the wheel of blame when things go wrong, because things will go wrong. In other words, I wouldn't go to your boss or to your boss's boss or anyone and say, I'm really concerned about this person's skills, just outside of any context, right? If you have a peer review system that is a planned part of your work system, that is different. And in a peer review system, the idea is that people are honest and respectful of one another. And in that case, just be honest in a way, but you know, phrase things in a way where you would like some, you would want to know if it was you, you would want to know the extent of the problem, but you would want to be told it in a way that was more constructive and helpful than, you know, personal. Right. So in the case of peer review, I always try to think about, okay, what I would want to know the honest truth, but what is the way I would, you know, be able to to read it the best. If you have people ask you your opinion, you know, if your boss and I don't mean people, I actually do mean specifically your boss comes to you and in a private conversation asks you to assess your peers skills to your boss. In that case, I, I think it's also fair to be to be honest, um, ask your boss not to repeat the conversation to your peer, say, you know, is this a private conversation? Because you, the thing you want to be really careful about, you don't want to have this conversation with other peers, in, you know, unless it's to the person who's asking you about their skills and they want a, an assessment from you. You have to be really careful in this situation when you feel like your peer isn't skilled because you don't want to create an environment where you're gossiping about it to other people or where other people on the team are all kind of looking at down on that person. That becomes a really toxic team environment fast and you want to keep things really positive and respectful for the health of your work life because when you get into a situation where everybody's kind of talking bad about one person, it is not any fun to go to work, right? Especially for that person, but for everyone else on the team too. So I would really try to, to only talk about, you know, talk about skills and what skills people do and don't have in a really, you know, a specific review format. But that being said, you don't want to have situations where you're hiding mistakes people make. Part of the thing about making mistakes with changes, when you're a database administrator, we all make mistakes. We all have changes that go wrong. And you want to have a, uh, an work environment where people own up and say, yeah, this didn't, you know, I plan this, this didn't go as I planned, and here's what I'll do differently next time and make sure that that's part of your, your change cycle is following up on close changes. You don't want to have a situation where you are hiding the mistakes of a teammate in any way. So if you have a situation where, you know, you do have a change process, but your coworker just kind of goes off the ranch. Like you have a change process, but you come in and you know, you're looking at things and you suddenly realize, hey, wait a second, these things are in the simple recovery model now. I don't think there was a change request for those. In that situation, you wanna ask everybody on the team about it. Hey, does anyone know why this changed? I missed the change request for that. And you wanna be honest that we need to, you know, we need to make sure that we're following the, the process on here because I, I thought it was a big deal if we lost more than X minutes of data on this system. Is that not true now? Change management not only helps make sure you make good changes, but also helps you share information with your team about, right, about how things are and why they are that way. So do be honest and clear when stuff goes wrong because you would want you know, someone to be honest and clear when stuff goes wrong to you. And honestly, 
this part of the situation of not making it personal, but being open and respectful, but honest when the other person doesn't follow the process or does make a change that isn't a good idea without review, that's actually, the, I think, the trickiest part of this dance, but you can do it. Part of the mindset that'll help you get there, and, and this is where I think it, it's tricky, but it's actually doable, and this is sort of, okay, well, we're not perfect people, and it's, it's kind of difficult working in this situation. What do I, how do I focus my mind to get through this? What I would really do is center yourself on focusing on building your own skills. As you continue as a DBA, the skills to define strong, resilient processes that can be carried out by people who may make mistakes with good documentation, those skills are going to be increasingly useful to you because you are going to, as you grow in your career, have junior DBAs who don't know as much, who you have to define processes for them to do stuff, give them good enough documentation that it happens right, and you're going to need to review their changes and make sure they're doing things right too. So if you think about this as I'm building my skills on processes and documentation and change control, and that actually really is helpful to me in my career, then it kind of helps point out to you that although it's a difficult situation, there really is something that you can get out of this that kind of pushes you up through the ranks of, of database administration. Because after working with a peer who's, who's got weaknesses and kind of puts your team at risk, training more junior level folks who have sort of more of a, you know, willingness to learn and are kind of in that position of, of wanting to get more input from you than a peer necessarily naturally is, you know, you're going to be a rock star at that after your experience. So focus on where do I want to grow and how can I, you know, if you want to grow as a performance sooner and stay technical, Building up processes around that and documentation around that is still extremely important. So talk to your boss about here's where I really want to train on, but I also, here's one way to phrase it, as I learn more about performance tuning or high availability or whatever area you want to focus in, say, I also want to think about how I can build processes and documentation for this that helps the rest of my team. Now that's something your boss is really going to want to hear and also can kind of put you in the position of maybe starting to set up events where you share the documentation that you're writing or the scripts that you're building or the processes that you're using with the rest of your team. So you are helping your teammates as a good peer. And also really that, that kind of activity really puts you in a great position to advance and grow your career at your company and it's fantastic resume and interview material to talk about in the future, right? Good, strong, resilient processes and documentation, I know from experience, are also really good for you at 3 a.m. when you get paged and are your very sleepy self who may be a little quick <laughs> to do something inadvisable as well. So it can protect you in an on-call situation as well. So I hope that these thoughts have provided you some help. My friend who is living next door to Derpton, I hope that your whole work neighborhood improves and becomes a safer place soon. Thanks for listening to Dear SQL DBA. We'll be back next week with another episode.